<laughs> Who here has seen Chainsaw Man? No. Good. Because... Oh, you told me about it a little bit. I know, I told you a little bit about it. Because it's not even Chainsaw Man that I even want to talk about. I want to talk about the fucking author. Okay? And I got this man's name pulled up right here. So I didn't butcher it, okay? My man, Tatsuki Fujimoto. All right? Let me give you guys a little bit of uh, background on this guy, okay? And why the hell, Uchi, you bringing up something that's not Dragon Ball? There is a specific reason, a specific reason only, okay? And it is because I feel like if we was to ever have a world where we could have other authors write Dragon Ball, I want this guy to do it. Okay? And I'm going to tell y'all why. And listen, you got to get with the trends. All right? So, of course, everybody's hopping on this Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man this, Chainsaw Man that. What the fuck is going on with this Chainsaw Man, right? This dude got the fucking shit coming out of his freaking head. Dome piece. He's got freaking chains. Freaking coming out both his arms. Don't know how it happened, right? Episode 1 explains it. And so I held off specifically to watch the first episode because I could have been read the manga. I could have caught up and everything, right? Because there's a couple other series that I like to try to keep up with. And, you know, this is, this is interesting because this is how you know this is a kind of a big deal for me to bring this up here and not on an extra, okay? Because the extras is where we talk about everything outside of Dragon Ball, usually, right? So far, yes. But uh, I am tying this all together because Mr. Fujimoto-san is a genius, okay? He is a kind of writer who I feel like the three of us would absolutely fuck with. And I think that if he was given the opportunity to write a Dragon Ball story of his own, I think he would blow a lot of people out of the fucking water. And why? Because he is doing exactly what we're looking for in Dragon Ball. What have we been saying for the last several episodes? We want some tragic shit to take place. We need Frieza to fucking kill everybody. Low key. <clears throat> on some, I'm the new destroyer, but I'm not taking the job because, you know, I'm not trying to get washed by the Supreme Kai Loki. Okay? On some, you know, head-ass loophole type shit, right? That's the bullshit way to, to end Frieza if he was ever go down that road, but... Fujimoto, right? So I'm not going to really like go over the first episode, but just as a little background for those that don't know, I actually read some of this dude's one shots, okay? Because he has a few one shots and he has another uh, series. I think it's called like Fire Punch Man or some shit like that. I don't even, I don't, I, I think I'm, I'm definitely butchering that name. But this guy has been around, okay? He's not, he's not new to the dance. He's not a new mangaka by any means. He's been around. Okay, and like I said, his one shots are something that I know you probably wouldn't really like. If if the anime was on Netflix, you would skip it. Like you would just you would just keep looking. Okay, you you would that, just look for something that else. Description ain't right. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, you wouldn't want you knew you wouldn't watch it. Okay, but it would be something that if you started watching, you would be sucked into it. Okay, because this is what this guy does. He is a tragedy writer, and by that I mean he makes his shit low-key on some depressing shit but it's not too depressing right it's not like unbearably depressing like it's something that's just like ah oh, damn like fuck type shit you know like it's the kind of shit that'll make you you know really like feel faster than normal like you start like asking questions and just you feel bad for whatever character and whatever is put in front of you type shit right so what does this guy do in all of his one shots tragedy after tragedy and then there's a twist and then there's a twist within the twist right so i'm just like okay so he's a tragedy writer so how is this guy possibly going to make the next popular big thing in shonen jump right because this is the same shit that has what black clover my hero academia jujutsu kaisen fucking demon slayer mm -hmm. that's all the that's like the big four right there right all the new shit not even talking about boruto and dragon ball and bleach now freaking back again once again you know what i'm saying shout outs one piece so many others to name right 
and now chainsaw man right everyone's on this chainsaw man and i and you we we already understand like the tropes that go into shonen right we understand like what to kind of expect like there needs to be like you know x amount of characters there needs to be a good enough plot some sort of you know the, the, like how they explain where they get their powers from and all that shit and then what power-ups right the fighting the good scenes the the good animation that's what you expect out of shonen so i'm just like bro how is this dude who writes tragedy going to blend that in with shonen and man this guy fucking did it with the first episode i was like yep i can understand how he is the new best big thing guy right now because everyone and when jujutsu had this anime everyone's on jujutsu now that chainsaw man got that fucking anime everybody's gonna be on chainsaw man and i'm telling you right now how this all ties in i'm telling you the way this dude writes if he had his hands on dragon ball people would dismiss toriyama toyota right on the spot point blank it would it would be an infinitely better product i feel like because mm. the first episode of chainsaw man you feel the tragedy within the first minute of that shit opening up you get so much like background on this main character and like obviously a little bit of like you you ask a few questions of oh like how did he even end up here what's this little thing that he's with like how did and all of that wraps up within the episode and he somehow manages to take tragedy and make it work for shonen okay and that's big because shonen obviously one of the more popular genres in the this this field right that we're in bro i now understand the hype i completely do so fujimoto san make another one shot for dragon ball though all right i need you to do that because if he did that shit dude i feel like like it would literally be the fujimoto arcs and the nasir arcs you know what i'm saying <laughs> the nasir because those these two people the individuals listen like they have like like nasir has fully captured the essence of dragon ball and then some fujimoto he would just add so many layers of actual the actual track listen i know off rip this is the guy that would literally bring actual meaning to death in dragon ball for reals yeah that would be interesting there would there's actually, not enough of that exactly there'd be real consequences none of this like oh if you participate then you're gonna get wiped from existence oh it's okay <laughs> we're gonna bring you back anyway type of shit no none of that i feel like if he kills somebody they're fucking dying and they're gonna be dying a terrible death and the weight of all that is gonna be like dude you want to understand the closest thing we've ever had to that tragedy type feel are two th two times saiyans got eradicated and when trunks' timeline happens mm. in the future right, right, right. the closest things we've had so now imagine the trunks scenario dude i feel like his version would be so much more exaggerated and it would like it wouldn't just be oh goku got the heart virus it, it like, would have he like would he would have a long painful fucking and it would just it, it would have the scene where it would be like everybody just one after another like i want it like we got the light-hearted milked version with the cookies of the future trunks arc okay history of trunks if fujimoto did the, the history of trunks dude we would see the tragedy behind all that shit i feel like this is the guy this is the guy so again this is not a plug this is not a sponsor viz did not hit me up fucking shuisha did not hit me up crunch rule did not hit me up i'm not plugging them like they, they they did not hit up the full power podcast and say hey talk good about chainsaw man no if y'all know and i'm gonna talk about something that is good that's how you know it's really good because I'm bringing it up here with all of this. Look, I ain't got no fucking chainsaw, man. I ain't got no chains. Look, none. <laughs> oh my god. I got none. So yeah, highly recommend. Highly recommend. So any 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 thoughts before I we we move on to something else? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, we kind of touched on it slightly about 
Dragon Ball not having enough tragedy or like, you know, what you've pretty much described. Like there's not enough essence involved in death, which would be actually interesting to see play out in Dragon Ball. Cause like, imagine like a permanent death for one of the Z fighters. Like you ain't seeing that nigga no more. <laughs> like that's what, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like it, it probably wouldn't happen to like a Vegeta or a Goku, but just because they're the main characters, the main stars. But like, I mean, imagine if that happened. That but then if that would just change the flow of the entire story. Like like newer characters down the line would probably get more star power. You know what I mean? So like for example imagine if goku actually died but but <laughs> imagine if goku died like somewhere i don't know we can we can make that argument at another point but let's say gohan and goten are still alive and shit like that but like this would bring more of an upbringing i feel like for goten and maybe even gohan at that because their father died and they want to take his role it's like kind of like in the future arc like for for trunks that's what gohan kind of did you know, like to fight off the androids, but he wasn't strong enough simply. And then everything else was done. But if death was more tragic or like if death was more meaningful, then uh, Dragon Ball would definitely change like its course from where we're at right now. From what I would think. I don't know what I got to say about that, though. What do you think about that, Kai? It's accurate. It's what we need. It's not what we're going to get, but it's what we need. Yeah. Yeah, no, I wouldn't expect it, especially at this point. Like, I feel like we're way too deep. Like, we're way, we're way, we're, we're way too deep, and then the writers just aren't like that. Like, they wouldn't. They're not gonna. I don't see them making any tragedy type of events like that'll make it meaningful long term. Yeah. Tell you what, though, let's let's keep this going. If there was a character you'd have to write off for the purpose of the story, who would it be? <laughs> Ooh. Goku. That would be the saddest fucking write off ever. Absolutely. I mean, that would be would, the most be the heartbreaking. Impact, but, like, but let's put Goku aside because he's too big of a character to write off at yeah, this point. Way it's too just... big. Way too big. Way too big. <laughs> it's just not happening. Most weight. Most meaning. Most feeling. Well, if we're gonna talk about I like a you. top three, like, and we're talking about being connected to a character, it's definitely Goku, Vegeta, and like. <sighs> You could argue Gohan, I guess, for the fucking lovers no. out there. You can't kill Gohan. You can't really kill Gohan, but... I was, okay, well, was going to say, but... I feel like the number one choice is actually Piccolo. I was he was gonna oh, be next. He god. was gonna be next. Imagine. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. See, and no and no GT the bullshit. They just they fucking dude, that was such a disrespectful death for Piccolo and GT. Remember that shit? Oh my god. Holy shit. That was I actually so, remember that shit. That was dude, I remember watching that as a kid. I'm like, why the fuck are they doing this? This is the I most look, random look, shit. I look he felt that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because, yo, I sounded like how I sound now back then. And that's crazy. It was like, past me said future me shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, like, it would probably be one of those three, I would feel like. Because anybody else's death probably wouldn't mean as much. Because we've seen them yeah. since the beginning. Like, you know? Like, yeah. Nobody else's, like, nobody else's death is going to be more meaningful than one of those three. I feel like. From a connection standpoint. But yo, but check this out, right? So this is a quick scenario that I just thought of. Okay, this is the Fuji the Fujimoto storyline. Low key. Okay. I'm gonna give it to y'all quick. Not only will this man give us tragedy, right? What 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 obviously will he bring us meaning to death? But what else? Actual meaning behind the use of the Dragon Balls. I feel like he would dramatize just collecting those things look how easy it is nowadays the radar shit no not don't would don't even exist that shit make it so that even if they did have a radar it would be so hard for them to fucking actually get a ball and they gotta get all seven still right so the it's show like would actually be about dragon ball yes exactly <laughs> right because it's just like all this tragedy so the dragon balls are there to maybe rectify and reconcile some things right so that's why i'm saying kill goku all right kill that motherfucker okay because when he the bit like listen he went through all dragon ball established main character here he is in z okay Maybe he, maybe he, you know, survives the Raditz stuff or he, all that shit's still there or whatever, right? But I want it to come to a point 
where it's like, let's say if it was, let's say Goku lasts up until Cell. What if it was Goku that died rather than 16? Okay, Cell kills Goku. And then that's when Gohan does the Super Saiyan 2 and everything. And all that shit still lines up, right? But Goku don't come back like for reals this time. And even after the seven years later, the tournament happens. There's no Baba giving him a fucking day for free. None of that shit. Like the memory of Goku, the warrior that was, is, is just that. And it gives the viewer more of a reason to miss him, to love him, to be like, oh man, Goku would have did it, da, 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 right? And that dynamic would be very interesting. However, then, it, there, then that brings more interesting points because then what happens? All throughout this time, they're growing up, they're training, they're getting stronger, they're trying to definitely keep it together because they got no more Goku. Right? All they have is Gohan. At that point, at this point in the story, Gohan would definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, be considered the strongest at, the, at that point in the story. So it's on him. And now he has all this, this, this new weight on his shoulders. And it's just like more tragedy. Let's say Krillin fucking goes next. That was Goku's best friend. Oh my god. The fucking tragedy. Then Piccolo. Oh my god, we haven't even got to boot yet. And they're killing all these characters that have some sort of meaning. And now what does this do? This builds Gohan's character even more. And he's like, oh my god, like, this fucking sucks. I can't even believe this man Spopovich hit my girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is crazy. And then he finally gets to a point where he's like, I have the Dragon Balls. Do I wish for something practical? Like... I don't know, a power boost, right? Imagine they did that. Or I wish for somebody. But this is not the Shenron with three wishes. This is the Shenron with one, okay? So that way it's fair. And they were toiling to get those Dragon Balls. Like, there's no, <laughs> let me collect them again. Right, right. And and that's that that almost would, all, like, literally just be, an, like, a part of this crazy, overly dramatic and tragic Dragon Ball from Fujimoto, I feel like, because, dude, imagine, like, the last time they ever used the Dragon Balls, and then from the next time they use it, it would have to be, like, arcs. You know what I'm saying? Like, arcs and arcs between <laughs> to give meaning to the Dragon Balls. You know, Goten wouldn't be born then. Yo, he's right. And the, that's it, crazy. It, like, if the timeline you're saying, like, if he dies at the Cell Saga, like, it's well, actually, well, that's not true. That's he not true. Yeah. Pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven years. Well, I guess yeah. Yeah, no. Goku could have. Goku. Yeah. Goku could have handled his business before going he to the tournament. He hit that right before. He, yeah, he hit that right before he went to the tournament. He was like one last pump. Or 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 Chi Chi, however way she did it, because he, Goku apparently never oh, yeah, kissed the girl. She definitely fucking drugged him in his sleep. Yo, that's crazy. Right. Yo, Chi 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 Chi. Mm. Nope. Who knows? I mean, it, I guess they can plot it that way. I guess I don't know. But then Go Goten don't got a, a dad. <laughs> and then Gohan will have he to take care when he grew up. His mom taught him Super Saiyan. Yeah, but yo, but think about it. Think about that, right? Because Goten's never met his dad. Gohan has. So that's also a part of the confliction of who he wants to bring back. Whether it is Goku or Piccolo or, you know, Krillin for whatever reason. But, you know, like, just thinking about that, like, that's something fresh that we've never actually talked about because of this fucking Chainsaw Man. Because of this author, Fujimoto-san, OD. I'm telling you, I already said this in my reaction video because, of course, I reacted to it. I had to. When this anime finishes, that's going to be my next shit that I'm going to read. Guarantee. I'm going to I'm gonna treat that like I did Promise Neverland. Because once that season was done, that last episode, I remember, I'll never forget where we was at. You, me, Lil Ooch, Papa Ooch, all sitting there. Last episode was done. I was there on the couch with my fucking iPad reading the, yeah, no, the was, chapter. That was very good. That was very promise I mean, that was very good. But then I mean what they did with the second season. I never finished it, but that's that's an extra <laughs> that we will discuss at a later time because yeah, tragic. You let's talk about tragic. Season two, promise neverland. Don't look back. <laughs> Just don't even look. Okay? Just don't even fucking look at it. So Yeah, man. Tragic Dragon Ball. T D B. Now that would pump its stock up probably a lot more than it is. Yeah, I mean like look at all the other series that exist. That like when something happens, you feel that shit. Something fucking happens. You know, I mean, like bleaches. I mean, they ain't got no fucking wishes in bleach. They ain't got nothing. Once you die in bleach, you're gone. Look at Demon Slayer. 
Demon Slayer, yeah. Our fucking boy. There ain't no wishes in Demon Our Slayer. Our fucking boy. Oh. The yeah. fire the Hashira. Fire Hash yeah. But come yeah. on, son. Yeah, no, that was crazy. Come I, on, no, son. I don't think anybody expected that shit. Hell I, no. I for sure didn't expect that. I think we just saw that nigga. <laughs> like, imagine just being introduced to a character, then a couple episodes or a movie into it. Man already died. That's why I'm like Attack on Titan shit but to be honest. It, but that's great storytelling because there it because is. he because that shows how strong those demons are. There what, it is. Whatever they're called, I forget. I haven't watched it in a minute. Yeah. But yeah. you know, y'all you, you, know what I'm talking about. I do. See. But those motherfuckers are strong as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it it raises more questions for sure. Yeah. Oh, that's that good shit. <laughs>